Hey Detroit, welcome to the next episode of 5 to 10 in the D. We're in Campus Martius in downtown Detroit. And as you can see, they're getting ready, prepared for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And we're about to speak to our next guest. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everyone, I am so excited to be here with my next guest on 5 to 10 in the D, Zara Northover, um, who I saw you on LinkedIn and you reached out and we started talking and I'm just so inspired by your story Thanks. and your drive. And you know, I was just looking at some of the things that you've done. Um, you're a dual U.S. Jamaican citizen. Mm -hmm. You are Jamaican Olympic hopeful, which yep. we've got to talk about that. we got to hear about that. Eastern Michigan grad. Uh, student ambassador at U of M, uh, motivational speaker, substitute teacher, <laughs> social media ambassador, and you've been working at Quicken Loans now for five years, and you just uh, had a promotion to a business consultant. We want to hear all about that. Zara, where do you, where do you get your drive? Ah! Like, where does it come from? <laughs> I ultimately, honestly, like, hello, everyone. Um, I just, like, I'm high on life. Like, right? Like, you know, like, we're out here in the city of Detroit. Like, look how beautiful it is right yeah. now. And um, that's what drives me. Like, I love being an underdog. I love doing the things that people think that I can't do. Like, going against being a statistic, right? Like, overcoming the odds and showing people it's possible. And then helping them know and achieve their dreams and, and make a move too. So like, I just feel like I was kind of born and created to do that in my life. You were an Olympic hopeful. Um, how did that experience shape who you are today? Well, the good thing about being an Olympic hopeful <laughs> was I was the hopeful that became an Olympian. Oh. So I actually went to the Olympics in 2008, uh, competed for Jamaica in the shot put. I am a dual citizen. So for some people that may not know what that is, my parent, like my mom, uh, I was born in Florida, but my whole family, mom, dad, grandma, everybody's from Jamaica. So I was able to apply to get dual citizenship. And that story is actually really funny. So I'll take a moment because it's all about being in the right place at the right time. So I was in high school. A friend needed a partner to throw this thing called the shot put. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. Like, I didn't know what it was. I saw the heavy ball and they were throwing it as far as they could. And I ended up throwing further than any other girl on the team. Wow. And the coach was like, all right, you don't have to practice, but this is what you're doing, right? <laughs> like, so I totally threw the shot put. And then before I know it, I'm making team after team after team. I land a full scholarship at Northeastern University where I got my first degree. And then I tell my coach, I want to go to Penn Relays. Like, who doesn't want to go to Penn Relays? It's usually where the world comes together to compete um, at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And I saw this Jamaican tent with Jamaican food and I said mom we gotta get some and that's literally how my career with Jamaica started wow. uh, because I went I got this food I met the coach and he said you're Jamaican you should come to Jamaica and my dad can be, like lives in Jamaica my mom lives here in New York and um, I said you know what my dad's never seen me compete so why not my first competition in Jamaica I think I was like 19 or 20 I broke the national junior record and two weeks later became a citizen. So that's kind of what put me on the journey to become an Olympian years and years later. What I often tell people is athletics is like being a rock star and an artist, like a struggling one until yeah. you make it. I wasn't Usain Bolt or, you know, Michael Phelps or Tyson Gay or, you know, all the, you know, like the ones that are sponsored. I was the athlete that felt like I had a chance that knew I could make it so I had to work as well as practice okay. and I had to work and train pay for my own meats pay for all my own gear pay for all these different things um, but I just knew inside like that this is what I wanted to do so my coach there was a coach in Arizona actually that said hey you have what it takes so I, that's all I needed to hear. My coach on, was at the time in Boston was um, had pancreatic cancer, oh. and um, he said, "You know what? This guy's really good." So I drove in my little tiny 2001 Focus from Boston to Arizona.
Arizona, lived out of a car, slept on a friend's couch that I didn't even really know yet, um, and trained with that team and ended up making the 2008 Olympics that year. Like, there's a, a obviously a whole long story that goes within that, but just to be able to show you, like, when you believe something and you just keep moving in faith, being certain of the uncertain, it's gonna come to pass. And that's literally what happened. And that, from being in Arizona, the coach got the job at the University of Michigan, and you know what that means. Coach gets a new job, athlete goes to a new location. Yeah. So that's what brought me to Michigan. Yeah. So you saw Detroit, and you decided, I want to make this my home. Yeah, so and like, think about, think Detroit reminds me of, like, remember Brooklyn? Nobody wanted to live in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Nobody wanted to live in Brooklyn, New York. You know, people don't even talk about going to Kingston, Jamaica. So Detroit had that kind of negative connotation. Um, I always joke and tell people the only thing I knew about Detroit was 8 Mile and Eminem, right? Like, you know, like, that's the only thing I knew about the city. Yeah. But the year I actually did not make the Olympic Games in 2012, um, my coach had died. Um, the one that had the pancreatic cancer. My father was, uh, my brother was shot and killed and my father uh, had heart failure and passed away as well. It was a rough year, but I still tried to make that team because I kept telling myself I was gonna have the, the amazing story at the Olympics, the girl that just didn't give up. So when I didn't make the team, that was like another death in itself, but it was like also a rebirth. I came down to Detroit for the first time and I remember being at Hart Plaza and just like feeling this wind. And one of the things that my dad told me before he died was, Zara, I'm going to be the force behind the wind. And when I felt that wind and I turned around and I saw the big city, the big lights, you know, granted there wasn't much people on the streets, but I saw it. I felt like this was where I needed to be. And that's what started the 77 applications before getting hired at Quicken Loans. You said that you wanted to be part of the revitalization of Detroit. Um, how how have you like sought to achieve that, or how are you still looking to help achieve like all the great things that are happening here? In Definitely. So. Even from before I was here, I would always utilize social media to my advantage, right? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, people don't know about Detroit, right. you know, necessarily. They think of the bad things. So they're not seeing yeah. downtown. They're not seeing Dutch Girl Donuts. They're not seeing Baker's Keyboard Lounge. They're not seeing the big slide at Belle Isle or, yeah. right, the old Babalo boat like that, right? Like that now just at least takes you around the city. Yeah. They don't see Shane Park. They don't see all this greatness that that is the city also, right? But most importantly, the people are the city. So I don't just go to like the localized midtown, downtown Detroit. I find myself in areas in the west side and the east side and literally just recording, Instagramming, telling people like, right, you should be here. Detroit is the new, right? The, the Paris of the United States, right? Yeah, that it once yeah. was. Like I talk about these things because then now I have friends call me all the time like, hey, I want to invest in the city. Hey, how do I get involved in the city? And then ultimately, you know, at Quicken Loans, we do a lot of volunteering. Um, I personally have did a lot of like going to career days and talking to the youth because I do still feel like in a day and age where everything is so technology based, we're not communicating that much. And people if you're not telling people about the opportunities about the internships that are available to people just right within the city then they just don't even know to apply yeah. so that's kind of my way of giving back was by mentoring and by talking to youth and not even just youth but single moms by you know like incarcerated individuals that yeah. like need a need a need a mentor need yeah. someone that could help and I help in any way that I can how, do, how does your love for Detroit align with the value, values or what's happening at Quicken Loans, your, your job at Quicken Loans? So one of the reasons why I applied over and over again, it wasn't just because Quicken Loans is obviously the big company in the city. Yeah. It really was because the, the selfish reason was because ultimately I wanted to see an Olympic Games come to Detroit. We all know if there's going to be any company behind that happening, it was going to be Quicken Loans, yeah. right? Like yeah. So that was one reason. But then the real reason was because we have this thing called the isms. It's our culture, right? Like, you know, just to give a few, we'll figure it out or every client, every time, no exception or excuse. Like, right? Like, I truly believe that like the isms are who I am as a person. So like I am, t I am the company to the core and I wanted to be a part of something that was going to advocate 
right? Do work in the city, a place where I know that I can knock on the CEO's door. I could email Dan Gilbert directly myself and have a voice because I'm always telling people like at the end of the day, one of the things I do see myself as is a voice for the voiceless or I help people find the voice when they realize where they've lost it or they realize they, they had one that they didn't know that they had. Yeah. And um, that's how we start to create change is when people learn that they have a voice and they know how to voice what they need and they want. Yeah. What do you aspire for like five to 10 years from now? Ooh, where, where do you see yourself? <laughs> so I, um, while I competed, I actually wore, um, I didn't actually wear Nike or Adidas or any of those things because I wasn't sponsored. So eventually something came on my heart and that was moving in faith. Like I am a Christian, but I, right. I'm one of those people where it's not even about religion. It's whatever you believe, right? Like, so at the end of the day, faith is about being certain of the uncertain. That's why 77, you can't tell me I'm not persistent, right? Like, like, <laughs> like I will go until I get my way, right? Yeah, like, you know, yeah. like, especially if I truly believe it's right. Yeah. So um, moving in faith LLC has been trademarked. Um, there was a feature probably about four years ago in Crane's Business Magazine, where it talked about me wanting to start um, a global retail movement, right, just to, to kind of spread positivity. So like my goals moving forward is obviously to continue to, to be a part of Quick and Loans because I do tr truly feel like I am I am part of this company. The company is part of me and I am part of it. Yeah. Um, but I also like, I'm excited to venture off and start doing some other things on the side as well that I had started prior to that I never finished that just was put on hold. Like, you know, so now my younger brother is training for 2020. Really? Yeah, he, uh, awesome. his name is Wayne Northover. Aww. We'll compete for Jamaica in the long jump. Okay. Uh, so like, you know, I'm supporting him and being there for him and his family as two kids, both on the age of two. So <laughs> that's a lot, um, but my goal is to really mentor young women, young men in the city, um, and not even just young, anyone, because at the end of the day, we all need some sort of mentorship. And this day and age, I say it over and over again, with social media, it's kind of taken away the human element. Yes. So if I could I be a voice and a person that could show up and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do because I know that that's one small piece that yeah. will make a huge difference, yeah. especially where people feel so isolated, where I know you because I know you from LinkedIn or Instagram or all these right. things, but I won't come up to you in person and talk right. to you because I don't know how to. What advice would you give younger Zara or to any young people today? Um, what, would you, what would you say to them? So the thing that I would tell myself is to one, learn how to understand and know your worth earlier i didn't trust my gut like i would execute and i pushed for things but i didn't necessarily wholeheartedly trust myself and my gut like i always felt the need to ask for permission or feel like i had to um to like be careful of boundaries but at the end of the day like you don't know unless you ask right like you don't know unless you put yourself out there so i've always some people might be like what you've always been aggressive <laughs> like but there's so much more sometimes that i think that i could have done if i would have pushed a little bit harder so i don't regret my journey and i you know i tell people not to regret your journey because everything that you've done in this life right is preparing you for what is to come but ultimately if i really really think hard about it i would trust my gut to just do things um yeah. just put myself out there and know that because I have the right intentions, the right mindset, and a pure heart, then I know it's gonna work out. And if it doesn't work out, it just wasn't meant yeah. to be. And it's, it's all that hard work, all that pain, it's what's made you who you are today, right? And it's, and it's built, you know, the endurance, that perseverance, that it's built your character and it's given you hope. And it has. So, what did say? <laughs> thank you so much no for being on 5 D. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a joy. And everyone, thanks for watching. I hope Zara's uh, story has inspired you. And uh, have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, if you get a chance, come down here to downtown Detroit next week. And there's so much great things happening down here. Um, and just getting ready for the holiday season. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye -bye. We're out! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>